I don't like the terms good person or bad person because it is impossible to be entirely good to everyone or entirely bad to everyone. Erwin Smith's ambition is both his greatest strength and his inevitable downfall, a man consumed by a singular vision. He is defined by the pursuit of truth. But what makes Irving such a compelling figure is the ambiguity of his motivations. We are left to wonder, is Irving a hero or merely a man who sacrificed others to achieve his own personal ambitions? Irving is introduced as a charismatic leader, ruthless, strategic, and calculated. His ability to inspire is undeniable. But beneath the facade of the noble commander lies an individual whose decisions are marked by a deeply personal obsession that obsession? To uncover the secrets of the Titans, a truth that he inherited from his father's tragic fate. His father's death was the result of his curiosity, of daring to question the government's motives, and Irving carries this guilt with him. It is a scar that never heals, but instead drives him forward. Throughout the series, Irving's leadership seems unquestionable. He leads charge after charge, often risking his soldiers' lives, and for many, this seems like the necessary burden of leadership. But the truth is far more complex. Every decision, every risk Irving takes isn't just for humanity, it's for himself. The truth about the world beyond the wars is not simply a tactical advantage in the war against the Titans, it's Irving's sole motivation for fighting. Kenny Ackerman once said, We humans are all the same, every last one of us. For some it's drinking, some it's women, some even religion, family, the king, dreams, children, power. All of us had to spend our lives drunk on something. Else, we'd have no cause to keep pushing on. Everyone was a slave to something. This was true for Irving as much as it was true for Eren and his desperate drive to pursue freedom at any cost. The revelation of the true nature of the Titans had a remarkable impact on the commander. For a moment, a brief fleeting instant, Irvin's lips curl into a faint almost imperceptible smirk. Not of joy exactly, but satisfaction. Levi watched him closely, noticing the odd glimmer in his commander's eyes, and he understood that the revelation of Titans being human meant something more to Irvin than simple horror or pity. In that subtle expression, Levi saw traces of Irving's relentless curiosity, his obsession with uncovering the truth. He realized that, in some way, Irving was satisfied. This revelation meant that they were on the cusp of something far greater than the Nightmare of Titans, as they got closer to uncovering the truth of their world, one that Irving had sacrificed countless lives to reach. Levi felt a pang of conflict as he realized what this moment meant for him. He had murdered so many people. To most and himself, the revelation is a nightmare made real. The titans they've been ruthlessly killing were once human, just like them. But to Irvin, this was not a cause for dread as much as a step toward the unknown, toward a dream him and his father shared. Levi might have sensed a dangerous edge to this satisfaction, but he chose not to question it. Because despite everything, Irving gave Levi a purpose, a path. Irving is the man who put Levi from a life of aimless survival, who gave him a reason to stand, to fight, to believe in something beyond his own survival. But now he faced a man who possibly didn't believe in the mission he preached to so many, who laid their lives down because he asked them to. But no matter the strange glint in Irving's eyes, Levi held his commander in unshakable respect, bound not by perfection but by purpose. In that moment, Levi accepted that Irving's mission might come with unsettling revelations, even dark ambitions, and still, he chose to follow him. It's a loyalty rooted not in blind trust, but in the meaning Irving gave to his existence. A loyalty Levi understood might one day come at the ultimate cost. But of course, this complexity of Irving's nature was something even Flo came to understand. When the time came to make that impossible choice, to decide between saving Irving or Armin, it was clear to Flock, to Levi, and even to Hanji, 
The right choice wasn't about who was morally pure or full of hope. No, the better choice was the one willing to bear the unbearable. The one willing to sacrifice his men without hesitation, if it meant humanity would have a chance. In that moment, Flock saw something that only those truly close to Irvin could comprehend. That Irvin wasn't a hero in the traditional sense. He was a man able to bear the monstrous weight of those sacrifices who had made peace with the darker side of leadership, if it meant leading humanity forward. And despite all this, or perhaps because of it, Irvin was indeed a great commander. Remarkably, he had led his regiment with the lowest death toll in the scout's history. If there is a person who can change something, that person is surely someone who can throw away something important. He is someone who is forced to throw away even his humanity. If you are a person who cannot throw away anything, you will not be able to change anything. In his own words, Amin once reflected that to achieve the necessary, a person would have to compromise their humanity, to embrace the monster within. It's a concept we see embodied in Ani's actions, who abandoned innocence to become capable of horrors in the name of our cause. Even Armin the idealist understood this. When the time came, he sacrificed commerce to protect humanity's future. That's the nature of resolving Attack on Titan. Each character, Eren, Levi, Hanji, Mikasa, even the ever-optimistic Connie and Sasha, knew when to dirty their hands, all because their loyalty to humanity outweighed the purity of their own conscience. I like to think this conviction, the balance between self-sacrifice and ruthless resolve, was instilled in them by Irving. He represents the perfect duality, both man and monster, selfish and selfless, a leader who carried the weight of his choices in every glance, every order, every silence, because Irving understood something fundamental, even though he might have not truly believed it. To protect humanity, sometimes you might be forced to watch yourself become the very thing you seek to destroy. One moment that stands out is his conversation with Levi, when he admits that he isn't humanity's savior. Irving himself says, I want to go to the basement. Everything I've done until now was because I thought this day would come that some day I could check if I was right. So many times I thought death would be so much easier. But always the dream I shared with my father flashed through my mind. This is a confession that strikes at the heart of his character. To many, Irving is a hero, someone who leads them with confidence and hope. But he knows that he is nothing more than a man seeking personal validation. The weight of his father's death and the relentless pursuit of knowledge consume him. His honesty in this moment reveals that he sees his soldiers not as people, but as necessary sacrifices for a goal that might not even bring salvation to humanity. A goal he admits made death seem almost better. He was trapped by this obsession. He was a slave to it. And yet again, Irving is undeniably a great leader. His ability to inspire others comes from the fact that he is willing to sacrifice everything, including his dream. During the Battle of Shiganshina, we see the combination of Irvin's arc, where he orders his soldiers to charge into certain death. Knowing full well that the goal of their mission is practically suicide, he makes a slight nudge to the fact that only a great conman could lead these young scouts to their deaths, and that's what he believes himself to be. In the end, he sacrifices himself, but is this noble? Or was this simply the only way for him to escape the burden of never reaching the truth? Irving's decision to lead the final charge is the most human moment we see from him. He faces a truth of his own, that the truth he has been seeking might never be found. In that moment, he is caught between two worlds, one where he continues to fight for his personal ambitions and another where he gives up his desire to finally become what others see him as, a leader who sacrifices for humanity's greater good. Levi's decision to let Irvin die, to allow him to rest, is as much a recognition of his humanity as it is an acknowledgement of his flaw. Irvin is tired. His dream has consumed him, and in Levi's words, 
Irving deserves to finally rest. That final scene with Irving's hand reaching out in his dream towards his father and the truth of the world is quite haunting. It is the final testament to the complexity of his character. Irving Smith's legacy is not that of a simple hero or martyr. He was at the core a man driven by an obsession so deep that it ultimately became indistinguishable from the noble cause of saving humanity. For Irving, the truth was both a curse and his salvation. He led thousands to their deaths in pursuit of it, and in the end, it's unclear if he ever truly believed that he could save anyone, or if he was simply trying to justify his own sacrifice. Irving Smith is a leader, but more than that, he is a man, flawed, driven, and tragic, and that is what makes him unforgettable. For me, Irving is a mirror. We search for meaning in the eyes of others, striving to be seen as worthy, directed, and flawless. Yet, Irving's narrative whispers a gentle truth. Humanity is a tapestry of contradictions, woven with love, tears, and imperfections. In Irving's story, we find solace in embracing our multifaceted selves, freeing us from the constraints of simplistic labels and embracing the rich complexity of our shared human experience. And in this, we find growth and hope. Hope that we may be better.